The new generation of Lions now in Allen Park. The draft is over. We are here to talk about it on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. Easy enough to say. John Neo <laughs> on the couch here with Mike Stone. My name is Brad Galley. Have the Tigers clinched the division yet? Uh, no, but they're eight up in the loss column. How about that? And five up in the division, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The Tigers are cruising. There's a special atmosphere down at Comerica Park. We're going to dive into that. So many issues of who's the next Pistons coach. Is Mike Babcock still with the Red Wings? A lot going on in this town, but of course, as always, the NFL draft rules for, I think, eight days possibly, oh I think it went this week. Eight months? <laughs> eight months, right? Well, because they moved it back, so the, all the pre-stuff went on forever and ever you now. You got your mock draft ready for 2015? Yeah, right. yeah? Right. okay, so, good. So where's Shalee yeah. Calhoun going to go? That's the big question everyone's going to want to know around here. <laughs> uh, Eric Ebron, the tight end, was the first player chosen, 10th overall uh, out of North Carolina. I was at the Lions official draft party with season ticket holders in the club level and the suite level. Yeah. And we had NFL Network ready to pump in the live feed from the Gem Theater out to NFL Network nationwide. I said, you guys got to be excited or just react at least <laughs> somehow to the pick. And it was just a mix of crickets and confusion. Yeah. I think no one had any idea who that pick was. I pose it to you guys first. Do you think picking a linebacker second, Kyle Van Noy from BYU, when was the last time you can remember the second round pick being more hoopla surrounding him yeah. than, the, than the first round pick? Especially in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. well, well that, that, that's true. The whole thing with Ebron, I think the criticism from me and others is not with him as the player. Everybody thinks the guy's going to be a great player. It's just, is that what they actually need right now? And with such a void in the secondary, and we find out this week about Chris Houston, he might right. not even be able to play right. All, right. all season. They need cornerbacks, and I don't know how hard they tried to trade down once Gilbert got off the board. They didn't use all their 10 minutes either. No, that that was a bit confusing, but I know. maybe we should have a little five-minute <laughs> moment of silence here for the, the five minutes they didn't use on the clock. <laughs> yeah. but. No, but, you know, I, I would disagree. I, I understand the com complaints and criticism right. about the pick. I'm not sure this guy is going to be a great play. I don't right. think that's a given at all because he doesn't have maybe the production and and the, and the track record you'd like to see necessarily from the top ten. Yeah, the drop drops. passes we've right. seen that before. But yes, we have. <laughs> but what happened was it didn't it didn't fall their way. Right. You know the, the guy that the cornerback they did want Justin Gilbert went right before him. Anthony Barr went. Then they're stuck there at ten with probably not the pick they wanted to make right. initially. And, and so they made the best of it with a guy who certainly fills a need for them. I think that's a problem. People say, oh, we don't need another tight end. Well, he's not a he's tight a, end. Right. No, he's, he's not a tight end. They were clear to reveal he, he's a pass. He's, he's a third receiver. He's a he's the, I mean, you know, you've got him, Golden Tate, and Calvin Johnson now, and that's what they want and looking for in Mike Evans, frankly. Well, but. well, here's what I don't understand. This <clears> philosophy, and Caldwell said it right from the get-go, win now, win now, win well, now. Yeah, that was okay. a mistake. Well, you way. look at this team, and with all due respect, they're not ready to win now. And that's why you what? look at what some other teams, yes, because I'm right there, Brad. <laughs> when you look at some other teams, you build depth in, in defense, and that's what I think they should have done. But also they feel, wait a second, our defense is so bad, maybe, our corners are so bad, forgetting about the statistics, they were the middle of the pack, that maybe the only way for us but to aren't win, for, win now is we have to outscore everybody. But people, aren't, uh, people are forgetting about the statistics. The offense was as big, if not a bigger problem than the defense well, but in the, in the end well, of last but, season. But that's because of number nine. And, well, and now, okay. the pre look, they gave Stafford. There's he's got, no more excuses. He's got all his no toys. More, yes. he goes, yeah. Calvin here, uh, Ebron and here, Golden State here, certain, Bush here. I mean, it's all up for him. They're certainly not the only team that gives their quarterback, no. that protects, surrounds their I mean, the, the Buffalo Bills, with the former head coach we used to have right. here, jumped way up to get Sammy. They, are, they went all in on EJ Manuel, and I think – I feel a little bit more comfortable right. I was with the Lions going all in on I Matthew Stafford than the Bills. The same yeah, thing, exactly. drafting a quarterback, two wide receivers right away. When, when I saw what Buffalo <clears throat> did, I said, thank, yeah. thank well, you. Well, yeah, the Lions they gave up a that. first round pick next year, and that's what people wanted, you know, Matthew Derry, yeah, uh, right. one of them wanted. <laughs> uh, but no, it, honestly, if, pe if they had taken Donald, the defensive tackle right. at 10, which is what I think a lot of people, the consolation prize, they were, people. A third defensive tackle in four, well, you know, what it, well, I mean, well, a guy who's well, not going to play tackle. this year. No, but it serves Taylor Lewan, a guy who's not, you know. Forget about Taylor Lewan, but for Donald at least would say, you all can't, right. Ebron will be compared to Taylor Lewan forever. He could have been a starting mm. tackle. Yeah, I think, he'll, I think he'll fare but, but pretty the, well in But the thing with the Aaron right. Donald, if they would have drafted him, I would have said, okay, they're not looking to win now, which is fine. They're sitting there saying, wait, Sue might not be back. They've already said fairly, you better put up or shut right. up. So they are actually, that would have been a pick for the future, which I would have liked. You would have liked, but I think most people would have freaked out. That's frankly. It's funny at first when people did not like this pick. If you ran on Twitter, I mean, most of us right. that cover this team right. on a daily basis, 
did not like the pick. Most no. of the fans that watch this team did not like the pick. Like the player, don't like the pick. There's a difference. Right. So then now, once he starts to become a Lion, people agree to, okay, I'll look at the highlights now because you can't possibly know everything about every player. Once you look and you fit and you see that he's going to go into Joe Lombardi's offense, Lombardi says he's going to be the next Jimmy Graham. I asked him at the party, I go, you, you know, that's the comparison. He says, I want to be like that or better. Confidence <laughs> isn't a problem. You know, fans are starting to buy in. It's almost a thing of, okay, now prove us wrong, Martin Mayhew. You've picked him. Let's set up a team and prove us is wrong. It, is it Joe Lombardi's offense or Sean Payton's offense? Well, that's a good question. We'll that's find out. Question. And that's, again, yeah. right. we talk about this pressure being on Stafford, and it certainly is with yeah. everything they've invested in him and that offense. And you the know, pressure is on this new staff now. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to do? you got to turn this guy into Jimmy Graham. Because Jimmy Graham wasn't, you know, right. I mean, Jimmy Graham was a raw you know, basketball player that they turned into you know, the best tight end in football. That's what this staff now has to do with and this And the rest guy. of the draft, yeah, Van is a good player, but I always are skeptical when good teams like Seattle trade down. Well, yeah, but, you know, you, yeah, don't, you don't want to yeah. trade with Seattle or New England. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> no, but, but they, you know what? They, they probably would have lost him the next pick know, to Jim Schwartz right. and Buffalo, probably. So he, yeah. He's going to be fine. But they still only got one cornerback. Right. And because of that trade, they, they moved down. They lost their fourth They lost the pick. fourth. And you saw all the corners that went right. in the fourth and led and them. Then, if I had a criticism right of the, the first altogether. two days, if I had a, a criticism, the Travis Swanson, the, the, they had a desperate need for depth at offensive line right. and a guy to be your next center. But they, they panicked a little right. and took him, and then the run on cornerbacks Correct. comes, and then they don't get that maybe potential starting quarterback right. caliber guy. They got a guy who's a, you know, a bit but of a But we've talked spot. about it here a lot. I mean, they've drafted a lot of cornerbacks in the second and third round the past few years. Not in the first years. round, though. Yeah. Not in the first round, but they have the confidence. It's the curse they... of Terry Fair. Right. right? Going with you know? those guys, right. you're right. Brian yeah. Westbrook, too. Yeah. Fairway, yeah. Fairway was the last one. Last but, one. But all of Mayhew, that Mayhew was a cornerback yeah. in the right. NFL, so he should know. But it, the pressure is also on Bentley and Green Terry and Slay. Slay. More than anybody in my Slay. eyes. Right. Yes. They've got insurance. They think Rasheen Mathis is, is insurance for Chris Houston yeah. for now. I think if, if the Houston thing does not get any better, I think we'll see a trade of some sort. They have to. They have to. Right. And there's guys who are going to be cut now, you know, come J June, July, August at, with other teams that are better in corner, but that you could plug in there. But, yeah, I think the pressure's on Darius Slay and the pressure's on, you know, that defense, frankly. I, I will say this. The interesting <laughs> picks, uh, Reed from Princeton, is very interesting. Yeah. People yeah. love him. And he's your, he's your, you know, heir apparent, maybe, if he, if he develops, because he's pretty raw still because yeah. he played in the Ivy League. But. Well, Ian Rapport said that one GM at the, at the Senior Bowl yeah. said he was kicking everybody's butt. It was butt. a lot like Ansa last year at the Senior Bowl. He right. got better as the week went along, and then come the game, they were like, wow, this guy has something. So, yeah, no, there's, there's, some, there's some projects there on the, on the last day, but it's going to – it's going to, those first two picks are going to turn it into an Ivy League town. You got the Princeton uh, yeah. defensive lineman, you got the uh, Dartmouth manager, and right. Brad Rossmus. <laughs> and then us. And, and then, then us. there's yes. us. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we're just starting to weigh in on all of this. Use the hashtag 7 Sports Cave on Twitter because when we come back after the break, we're going to dive in and take your tweets. Uh, we've also got a lot coming up about other teams, but you said the, the biggest things that jumped out on you on draft day. In the later rounds, with the depth, they go get the kicker, they go get the cornerback later. Overall draft, I know you can't sit out here and, and grade it. Right. But everyone in this now society wants it. What do you grade the draft? Yeah, B minus C plus. I'd minus. give it a C probably because I, I don't I don't think Even though you just defended the Ebron. Pick. I, I defend the Ebron in in the context of, well, I don't think they got what they wanted out of the first round going in because I think it didn't fall their way. Is that um, their fault? I, it, partly yeah, it's you know, gotta be, right? You know, you, maybe there was a trade to be made to move up, you know, and get or Justin down, Gibbler. Like you were saying, right. Or, you know, hey, wait. Wait another few minutes. And, right. I mean, obviously, they, they were pretty sure the, the phone call wasn't coming, but it doesn't hurt to wait. But, yeah, to move down, and, and then maybe you do take Dark West Denard, you know, Gee, at imagine, 20 or whatever. Imagine a Lions, like a Lions cornerback who could play press coverage. Yeah, and right, people. who's tough, who's competitive, all those things that Mayhew yeah. cited as he wanted. Don't let him be a pro bowler right. in Cincinnati. Right. Why would we yeah, want that Exactly, here? with Leon Hall, another guy yeah. who was in your backyard here, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. No, I, there's, they're open to criticism. They left themselves open to criticism, right. for sure. But, like anything else, this, we won't know for a couple no. Of years. No, right which is the fun of the NFL draft. Yes. But everyone wants to know right now what's going on. Well, you can learn much more about Eric Ebron after the break if you stay with us here on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. When he was introduced to the media, he was also introduced to our David Solano. After the break, when we come back, he goes one-on-one -on -one with David to talk about expectations, about being drafted in the first round, and what those Lions fans are saying about him, and how he hopes to prove him wrong. Stay tuned.
Ford Field, the new home of tight end Eric Ebron. Oh, what he can do. He, maybe he should have proposed on top of Ford Field <laughs> instead of the Empire State Building. <laughs> I think he, he, he lucked out. Good choice. <clears throat> You're watching the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. Thanks for w waking up and talking sports with us. John Neal, Stoney, Brad Galley here. Use the hashtag 7 Sports Cave to interact with us. And our guy Mike Foss in the control room now checking out what you are saying to us. And everybody's got a thought about this Lions draft, Mike. What are people saying this morning? Yeah, they certainly do. No surprise. They're always uh, heavy, heavy talk on the Lions draft and draft reaction. And kind of, as you mentioned, uh, sort of an unfavorable reaction to uh, a lot of the draft picks. Let's get to it, see what people are saying. Using the hashtag 7 Sports Cave, George says Lions pickups were second to last in our division. Only Chicago fared worse. Uh, Fred says one pick after Ebron and Swanson, two guys the Lions will regret that they let go, Taylor Lewan and Chris Borland. Uh, Tim says, did the Lions mistake Ebron for LeBron? <laughs> Troy says in the last six years, there's been two right ends taken in the top, uh, I think that's tight ends taken in the top 20 of the draft. Lions have both, hashtag same old Lions. And Raymond throwing out a question with Cincinnati drafting uh, Darquez Denard, would you make a trade with Cincinnati for cornerback Hall? Guys, let's start with that division comparison because if you look at what everyone else in this division did, they First went round, they all defense, went defense, defense, defense. Yeah, Minnesota right. traded back up late to get right. the quarterback, right. Bridgewater, but still defense, defense, Green defense. Bay went ha ha Clinton Dix, and uh, Minnesota took what Gilbert, Anthony Barr, oh, Anthony know, Barr, right? Yeah, you know what though, Green Bay would have taken Ebron. They, oh, they, oh, they, yeah. they, they would, you know, and they, uh, who knows if they were them. calling and, and talking about moving up even because I think they, he probably would have fallen somewhere in between to Baltimore or whatever. But yeah, no, that's true. The Green Bay also took, would they take three receivers, four yeah. receivers? Yeah. Well, you look at the receivers, they always take later in the yeah. draft and they become and really good yeah, players. Exactly. Unlike so Aaron Rodgers is going to turn them into, you know, right. Unlike what the Lions do with Jordy Titus Nelson. Young and yeah. you know, maybe Ryan Broyles will yeah. be healthy for the first time. But their success rate with uh, receivers later in the draft is not, is not very good <laughs> no, as opposed, as opposed I, to Green Bay. I do kind of like the, the kid from Notre Dame. I Everybody think he, seems to like him. I think he, I could see him playing a slot role and actually getting on the field, you know, Hopefully his knees don't, well, you know, you know, you know Riddick, go the way Riddick Riddick was, was decent last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I think he'd be a, a good addition actually, and a guy who actually gets sees the field. Which says a lot, especially when they drafted was it Corey Fuller last year in the yeah, draft, and pick, they cut him. And, yeah, I mean, that was no, silly. Yeah, that pick didn't pan out. That no. was a project that I think is still well, a project. The other, the the, the tweeter on um, on Leon Hall, you can't really make a trade because he's coming off an injury. Yeah, he's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, and he could be on the market. Yeah. Do you grab a guy like that, or is there that too much of a There will be guys like that, though. right? And that's what right. I mean. I mean, there's you know some of these teams took safeties too because I think safety is still a concern for the Lions. Oh yeah, you know, um, and I, there'll be some guys that you know, Green Bay won't be one of them, but some some teams that cut a safety or or want to shop a safety. But here's one more from uh, Dave Ely, D L E four two three. Can you guys pull this up in there? Sportsgate with Stafford on the ropes. Why didn't the Lions consider Murray? Or McCarron. That's something we talked about on here for a while. If this was going to be the draft where they grab a yeah. guy late in the round, they had a chance to right. grab these guys. Yeah. Are you surprised they didn't? No, because they got a quarterback as an undrafted free agent. Yeah, kid James from, Franklin from yeah, Missouri from is going to come in and be the, the guy who competes for that third job. Right. Um, I mean, Kellen Moore, I don't think, fits into their plans anymore. But no. yeah, no. I, you I, know, I, I, I thought it was interesting. Cincinnati did exactly what, right. you know, because Dalton is under a lot of pressure down yeah. in Cincinnati. And they went ahead and, and drafted that guy who's going to maybe sort of put, put a little pressure on him. I, I don't, and that's another quarterback who's probably been coddled yes. and not held accountable <laughs> by his head coach, you know, so, uh, who happens and, to be friends and, with Jim Schwartz. Right, and, and, and Andy <laughs> Reid took um, right. Andy Murray. Yeah, right. So. Murray would have been interesting, two yeah. Georgia guys. Right, right. But we'll see. Instead, it's James Franklin. Uh, Eric Ebron's, though, the name that everyone wants to talk about. In a little bit, we're going to catch up live, by the way, yeah. uh, with Java and he's the crying yeah. tennis player. It's Aaron Murray. <laughs> Aaron Murray getting carried away. Uh, Java Chamberlain is going to join us live at Comerica Park. But first, Eric Ebron is the tight end that everyone's been talking about in town. You heard us. But here's a chance to hear from Ebron straight out of his own mouth as he talked to David Solano yesterday in Helen Park. I thought what stood out is you said you didn't want to stop hugging uh, the great right. Barry Sanders, did you? Take right. me through that no, moment. No, no. Um, when... Uh, when the commissioner called out, you know, we have a special guest for this one, I was like, man, who is that? You know what I'm saying? We just, we in the green room, like, trying to, trying to get the pick out the way. You know, you want to call out special guests. He's out Barry Sanders. I said, man, whoever gets this guy, got to, you know, go up there and be like, yo, this is Barry Sanders. And they, man, I got that phone call. 
first thing I wanted to do. I didn't even want to shake the commissioner's <laughs> hand. I tried to go straight to Barry Sanders. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, it's, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. That's some things you just got to treasure, you know, that moment. You know, I, I got pictures for days on my phone that I'll never delete, you know, keeping archives, print them out, you know, stuff like that because you can never get that moment back, you know, and um, for him to introduce you to his own, well, his his mm -hmm. franchise that he's played for and things like that, you, you got to, you, I mean, you just got to be like, wow. You know, Eric, a lot of people are, were a little surprised they went the tight end route in the first round, right. a lot of Lions fans, but mm -hmm. what do you want to tell them as far as what they can expect from Eric Ebron come game day and as you prepare for the season with all the weapons surrounding you? Um, you know, stuff that you can expect. Um, I mean, if you if, if you love, you know, the things that I've done in college and helping, you know, North Carolina be elite offensively is the same thing that you can expect here is to help uh, the Detroit Lions be elite offensively. And, you know, um, like I said, with a strong offense becomes a strong defense. And if we get, if we can definitely score points, you know, it helps our defense relax because they know they don't have to get a stop on this 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 particular, you know, series because, you know, they know the offense is strong enough to go down there and put up points at any any point in time. So if we can if we can take some pressure off our defense, then the defense will, will thrive. And if we can score more points in offense, then obviously that's how you win games. And Calvin Johnson, Matthew Stafford, Golden Tate, I can keep going, Reggie Bush, mm -hmm. to be able to play alongside with those guys, what does that mean to you? Um, I mean, this is this is a dream of a lifetime. I've thought about it. Even last year, um, playing alongside of Megatron, I mean, and having Reggie Bush run the ball, I mean, it's impressive of the amount of firepower we have on offense. And to be able to come in and contribute to that, it'll be, be amazing. A couple last things too, getting an opportunity to play here in the Motor City. This is a blue collar, hardworking town that loves their Lions. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on the Motor City so far, what you've seen? Um, I haven't seen absolutely anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all I know is them potholes before you make that right when you turn into the building. It had the little car shaking. That's the only thing I know. And uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here, man. When I get my chance to finally explore and go around and, you know, Get a, look at a little taste of Detroit probably Monday, and I'll be happy. I can't wait. And lastly, take us to the moment you proposed to her, Empire State right. Building. What a moment. What a day for you. Then, oh, by the way, I'm the first-round pick, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I mean, it's incredible. It actually makes sports in the top ten plays, which is crazy. And no one expected that. I just wanted to, you know. Me and my girlfriend has been together for two years, and that was our two-year anniversary was yesterday. So, what better way to cap off our two-year anniversary than, you know, making a long, long commitment in life to you know be together forever so yeah that's what I that's what I did it's like that scene on a Bruce Almighty yeah. when, when Jim Carrey takes Jennifer Aniston to dinner and she thinks he's about to propose and he says, I got anchor. <laughs> At least he made it about her on a day that was about oh, him yeah. too. And it was their anniversary, so I kind of get it. And I will say, we can grade the draft all we want. He gets an, we get, they get an A for personality and, yeah. and media, you know, talkative guy right there. I mean, we're going to yes. love him as a, as a media. And uh, the second round picks, uh, his, his wife, well, yeah, her fiance, we, yeah. was Miss, U, Miss U, USA Utah, right? We're going to have a lot of weddings coming up yeah. with this crew, too, actually. Which Think was what could have happened with A.J. McCarron. Stafford and Hall. Step, yeah. It's yeah. exciting times. <laughs> oh, boy. Bells are ringing. Yeah. No, he's got personality, though, and I think that helps when you got a guy who's going to be under a lot of pressure and, and probably getting a lot of criticism early on in his career. Mm -hmm. He seems like the kind of guy who can handle it. Can you handle what's coming at you next? Go over oh, to the bar. Because oh, uh, we right. got the fast five so minutes open. coming up next. I'm staying here. If I'm Chris Bill Schrader, follow. should I be Bill Schrader? Yeah, get the alligator. Ebron, man, let's, let's go. go. Alligator arms. Boom. There it is. Oh. We're moving to the bar. We're going to be talking fast five. A lot of coaching talk. Jim Leland, what's his legacy? He was at Comerica Park yesterday. Mike Babcock, <laughs> Mark Jackson, the next Pistons coach. Talking about that is much more. Neo, ready? Yeah, got it. Oh, one hander. That's right. We're coming right back. Big radio. Fast Five Minutes presented by Parts Galore this week. We have Java Chamberlain joining us in under 15 minutes, but as we kick off a Fast Five segment here, based on coaching, Jim Leland honored yesterday at Comerica Park. His legacy, one that is a bit confusing. There were wins, but there was also a time when people would question him. What is Jim Leland's lasting legacy, John? Uh, a guy that tapped into Detroit's sort of blue collar, you know, every man identity. And I think that's, he knew that, the fans appreciated them. They, they felt he was an honest guy when it came to that. I think his legacy though, 
in addition to being a guy that helped bring this franchise back to sort of a, an elite status in the league, I think it's also that they came up short. And I think it's, you know, those, those four playoff appearances were great. They knew they needed to win a World Series in there, and, and they didn't come through, especially that last time in the ALCS. I think that's part of the legacy, too. I think the biggest thing Jim Leland did as, as manager of the Detroit Tigers is he made baseball relevant again in this town. Before 2006, we went through two, almost two decades where people didn't care about baseball. Not only was the team bad, the team basically was boring. He had a few you know, moments with Cecil Fielder every once in a while. But from 87 to 2006, you couldn't get calls on the radio. It was terrible. Jim Leland came in, made baseball important. So a positive legacy, but couldn't get over the hump. I think that's hard to argue with. Another coach in this town who's had a great legacy has brought a Stanley Cup to Detroit. Mike Babcock, earlier this week he told CBC he is comfortable in Detroit, but with one year remaining on his deal, questions surround his future with that interest from Toronto maybe leaking in and waiting until next season. Stoney, what's the deal with Mike Babcock? Are he, is he going to be the Red Wings coach for the long term? Uh, I think he's going to be coached this year, and then after that, who knows. There's also rumors that he loves it here so much that uh, a certain college coach in Ann Arbor decides to hang him up. Believe it or not, Mike Babcock might actually enjoy that, but he is... Coach Canada. They love him there because of the two gold medals. After this year in Detroit, who knows? Maybe Toronto will have enough of Randy Carlisle and say, you know what, we'll pay him whatever he wants. Let him come to Canada and help bring a Stanley Cup back to this country. It's been 1993, and unless the Canadians rally, that's going to continue again this year. He's a great coach. He did a fabulous job this year, although he has to realize that uh, if he would have had Nyquist play before in, hey, from the yeah. beginning of the season and not Dan Cleary, they probably wouldn't have been an eight seed and maybe they'd still be playing. You each get 30 seconds, but John, you have about 10. Thanks I, a lot, I got it. Uh, <laughs> Mike Babcock's comfortable, or says he's comfortable. That makes the, the Red Wings uncomfortable, and I think that's exactly what he wants at this point. I think he's sort of playing his hand and waiting to see what the Red Wings will do in, in negotiations, leverage, etc. But I think he wants to be a free agent. Talk about leverage. Using 50 seconds there, leaving our poor man here. John go. here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, that's, are you? I don't know if you are. He gets 50 for the next one. Okay, good. Mark Jackson fired by the Golden State Warriors after three seasons despite playoff appearances, some runs that have made people pay attention to basketball in Oakland again. Is he a good fit for the Pistons? Well, you know what? I would argue yes, he is. And because he's Golden State's Rick Carlisle. He's a guy who rubbed people the wrong way. He's got an ego. He's got sort of an attitude. He likes to push people's buttons, including ownership and management. That's what happened here at the Pistons, and then the Pistons decided to get rid of an excellent coach. I think he'd be a perfect guy to come in here and help sort of sort of fix the mess, but also you know push these guys, because there is some talent there. I think there's a coach there that the, the Pistons should definitely take a look at. It's not to say Rick Carlisle wasn't a winner because no, he won one in Dallas. Yeah. No, yeah. and he won 50 games two years in a row yeah. here. Yeah. I agree with John Jackson would be terrific here. He is a point guard. Point guards are hard on point guards. Maybe Mark Jackson ah. could be the guy to make Brandon Jennings realize exactly what he is. Uh, Mark Jackson would be good. I still favor anybody with the last name Van Gundy to come here. <laughs> I love both of them. Looks like he might be snatched up by West though as well. Yeah. Uh, when you look at What's happened with this draft is the final two seconds hit. We move on to the draft, which seemingly never ended. With three days of coverage, now there's talk to expand it to four days. I used to sit in my college dorm room and watch every single pick. Growing up, I'd watch every trip with my brother. Now, it gets exhausting. Well, you're, you're older, you're, 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 you have a house <laughs> now, a house. you have a lot of life. I, I got a few days at Home Depot on Saturday, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I did the is same it, thing. Is I, it being expanded too much? I have three days is... They can't make it. What are they going to make it? Another day for round six and seven? I mean, people, it gets great ratings. The, the publicity leading up to it is unbelievable. And now they're also, they're talking about making it Memorial Day weekend. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I mean, can you imagine spending, hon, forget about going to the beach. Memorial Day, we're watching the draft all four days. <laughs> and after all, subscribe to this. Less is more. They've got about every other holiday, though, John. Yeah, no, and, and Roger Goodell and, and his owners, they're looking for money anywhere they can get it because that's what they do. But, yeah, I don't want to sound like Mark Cuban here, but less is more. There is a saturation point. Three days is too much, frankly, I think. Two days would be better. Now, the, the one thing I would say that they could do that if they're looking to spice things up, move it around. They were talking about moving it to, from city to city. I think they will look at that seriously down the road. But four days, no. And two weeks later, the way it was this year, no thanks either. No. Well, old memories of the <laughs> Silverdome. Come on in and get this nice and tight if you can see it. This is what the Silverdome looks like now. This is one Mike Foss proposed today. He said, 
What do we do with the Silver Dome? What would you do with the Silver Dome if you had that land? What should go there? Memories of, I guess, good times, decent times. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of great times. And the people, you know, we always talk about the Lions yeah. and all their heartbreaks, but they had some great memories there. Michigan Panthers winning a, you know, USFL championship. Yeah. The Pistons had some great, all, great stuff. All the concerts. You know what I would do if I owned that land? Huh. I'd blow it up and and build a shopping area or do something. That's yeah, what I would do. It's right off the highway. Yeah. It's prime real estate. I think that's the picture when the Lions drafted Terry Fair. I think that's what the fans <laughs> did too. When they passed on Randy Moss, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm no urban planner. I'm no civil engineer, but I think retail and shopping is probably what Pontiac needs. Residential as well. There's, yeah. no, but. I, the one idea that I thought that came along and sort of came, went away, an MLS team, a soccer stadium. Oh yeah. Some this city can support MLS. It can mm -hmm. support soccer. I'm a soccer fan. I know you guys might not be. It could support it. I think that probably will end up downtown. A stadium. Mike Duggan's talked about it. But the Silver Dome. I thought that idea actually made some sense too. I agree. A 25,000 seat yeah. MLS team downtown would be great. People have to, people. You know what? If the stadium is that small, they'll fill it up all the time. They can do it. There are plenty of soccer fans in this town, without a doubt. But well, we promised you some Tigers talk, and it's coming your way. Courtesy the man who wore the Zubas better than anybody else, yeah. Jabba Chamberlain, joining yeah. us live, standing by, down at Comerica Park. Fire us your Tigers questions. Use the hashtag 7 Sports Cave and see if Java can answer them next on the Suburban Forward 7 Sports Cave. The Tigers series finale against the Twins 105 today down at Comerica Park. You're watching the Suburban Forward 7 Sports Cave. Mike Stone, John Neal, I am Brad Gale. Use the hashtag 7 Sports Cave to interact with us as we are now joined live by Tigers pitcher Java Chamberlain at Comerica Park. Java, thanks for joining us, bud. Yeah, thanks for having me. Love the beard, love what you've been doing on the mound lately. The way this team's been playing, I was in that clubhouse a couple of times this week and I asked around, is it a good vibe when you're playing this well and the, and, the, and the wins are coming? I know you can't win a World Series in April or in May, but what does it do for you guys when you're rolling the way you guys have been rolling? You know, I think it just, it starts in the clubhouse and, and obviously, you know, it started in spring training with Brad and, and bringing his dynamic to, uh, to a new team. Obviously, he, he was coming in and didn't try to reinvent the wheel, and I think it just carried over into the season. And you know, we love to have a good time. Obviously, in the clubhouse, we we joke around and and do things like that. But when it comes to uh, to playing on the field, get between the lines, these guys are serious, and uh, it's definitely fun to play with these guys. And you know, we're playing good baseball from top to bottom, and uh, it's fun to see. Is it more of a relief being away from New York and all the hubbub, and now you can actually have a beard, and it seems to us have more <laughs> fun than you could as a Yankee? Is that kind of a weight off your shoulder being here? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm definitely saving money on razors, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's just, a, you know, sometimes change isn't always easy, but sometimes it's for the best. I had a wonderful experience in New York. I'd experienced a lot of things, and, you know, I'm so grateful for that opportunity. But, you know, I'm, I'm also grateful for the opportunity to uh, Mr. Illich and, and Mr. Dombrowski for bringing me over here and having this opportunity to help this team. They've been so close so many years, and, you know, I've been on the, the losing end a couple of times. So it's definitely nice to be on this side of things and, you know, obviously seeing how talented they are. And, uh, they just put together a great team, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Jabba, we, we saw the Zubas uh, <laughs> debut this week and sort of took on a life of its own. What's that all about? Can you explain to people just uh, sort and did you expect it to, to, to become what it was? <laughs> um, no, I actually did. I didn't expect it to blow up that big. I mean, it's, it's sad, though, when you put them on, you actually just want to go to sleep. It puts you in the mood <laughs> to just uh, shut down and go to sleep. But, no, we were in Minnesota, and uh, I think Joe Nathan got a gift of them, and Tori stole them. And then we started playing well, and I was like, a buddy of mine is, uh, is sponsored by him, and uh, let me give him a call and see if we can make something happen. And, you know, long story longer, uh, everybody's got him, and, and it's not only pants, it's sweatshirts, it's ties, it's everything. So it's exciting, and uh, I try not to put him on too often because I just want to sleep. If you guys saw my tweet the other day, you saw how, uh, how comfortable Victor looked in his, and uh, he definitely, definitely took him a little nap. Well, it's a high point in the season. I mean, you guys have been rolling well. And we're getting a, a Twitter question here from Raymond Labonte. Labre29 wants to know how the atmosphere in the bullpen is with fan interaction in Detroit compared to New York. Um, it's a little different. Uh, obviously, in New York, you can't really, uh, you're inside. And, you know, if you sit outside, uh, all the, uh, the bleacher creatures are behind you. And uh, the bleacher creatures are awesome. They, they were uh, a big part of, uh, of who I was out there. And I love those guys to death. And, but it's awesome seeing the, some of the Detroit fans and get loud when you get to the bullpen. And, you know, it's just awesome. Fans are great. They, they, make, this, they make this game fun. They make it entertaining. And, uh, 
you know, it's always nice to, uh, you know, when you get a fan that, that talks a little trash and so you can talk some <laughs> trash back. Now, now, you're from Nebraska. There's a certain Detroit Lion who played at the University of Nebraska. I think you, you know Sue pretty well from what I've been told. What is it about him that the fans, we can't figure out? Because we can't figure out if he wants to be here. He doesn't show up for voluntary mini camps. Have you spoke to him at all? No, when I, when I talk to him, it's it's strictly friendship. We okay. don't we don't talk shop. We don't talk business. So you're not getting any info from me. So nice try though. <laughs> Good effort. Good What's effort. he like as a like friend? It. What is Indomitian and Sue like as a friend? Oh, uh, you know, just uh, you know, when I signed here, he just you know he talked about the fans and, and what a great place it is to play. And you know, just uh, it, it was nice being able to to talk to somebody that's experienced it here and has played here and and knows what it's like. Obviously, being a being a visitor here and being on the visiting side, you see it from one perspective. But it was nice to uh, to get a perspective from the other side. Hey, John, but we, your success here this year, we've seen a lot of injuries. We've seen a lot of Tommy John surgery. Talk about your own experience there. I mean, how has it sort of changed your career? Um, I mean, it, it teaches you patience. You know, obviously, your arm feels well. You can't really heal a ligament. It, it's, you know, taking care of your shoulder, your scap, your back, and everything that goes along with it. So, you know, physically, it's, it's part of your job, but mentally is the hardest part, just knowing that you feel good and you can't play catch, or when you play catch, it's, you know, 60 feet for 20 throws, and that's all you got, even though you feel great. So physically, it is demanding on getting back, but mentally it's even harder just to, to know that you got to be out for that long and, and when you feel good and you want to push it, but, but knowing that you can't push it because, you know, your ligament takes time to heal to, to take to your body what they replaced and, and to make sure that your shoulder and scalp are strong from, from not using it for so long. Well, we love having you here, and we love having you on the show with us this morning. We, we like uh, you embracing this and joining us, so we try to hook you up. On Easter, you told us you loved Reese's. So oh, Kent's down there with Reese's. us, and uh, he's got a little treat for you, Kent. That's yes. for all you, man. That's a Tiger's bucket yes. hat there, a helmet full of Reese's. I love, it. I love it. I love it. I'll definitely share with the boys, too, because the boys like the Reese's as well. <laughs> so put your Zubas <laughs> nice. on, curl up, and watch a good yeah. movie and have some Reese's. That's on us, man. Believe it. Believe it. After we get a win, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and celebrate with a couple of Reese's and some Zubas. <laughs> <laughs> and some pops, man. Enjoy that. Thanks, Java. I love it. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, have fun, Thanks. man. Thank you very much. We just had uh, someone else poke in on Twitter and said, uh, who has a better head of hair between Brad Galley, Stoney, John Neo, or who would look better with Jabba's beard? Stoney. We need to get the technology to kind of yeah, superimpose I'm gonna the go with, thing. I'm going to go with the swarthy guy over there. With the hair? Yeah, yeah no, yeah. That's even a the beard, too. Even Detroit the beard, too. Yeah. Yeah. It is a great beard. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great beard. That's got yeah. a great beard. Yeah. He is what so a great, great person. Oh, my God, he's you awesome. Yeah. And I was going to ask him, because people don't realize how funny Miggy is. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, you watch the one that MLB show, he's a riot. He's great. And he loves the national media, so he turns it on for them a little bit more than us, which are like some other people in this town. But it is good to see. So, you know, and that's what this team was lacking the last couple of years. I mean, right. we've steadily, they've added a few, you know, Torrey Hunter and, and, and now this guy. I mean, that's what they, they needed a little lively attitude in that clubhouse. And I think they found it in a few of these guys they brought in. There are plenty of personalities. Yeah. It's a fun clubhouse to go into. We'll use Twitter. Use the hashtag 7 Cape and ask us, Questions about the Tigers, and we've got one for you. Is there something special brewing down at Comerica, or have they not really played enough good teams to know what's really going on? We'll use your tweets on TV. When we come back, so much more about the Tigers and about Detroit sports in this town. John Neal, Mike Stone, Brad Galley, you're watching the Sports Cave, everybody. Talk so much about the Lions draft. Talk about the Tigers. We will dive back into the Tigers, but Michigan, Michigan State, well represented in the draft. At least we thought so ahead of time. Not a ton of guys going off the board, but Taylor Lewan, first round to the Titans. Darquez Denard, first round to the Bengals. Then we had to wait till the third round. Michael Schofield goes to the Broncos. Jeremy Gallon in the seventh round to the Patriots. And then free agents Max Bola signs with the Texans. Isaiah Lewis joins Denard with the Bengals. Surprised a little bit that some of these Spartans that won the Rose Bowl went so late? No, not, not really. Yeah. Um, um, I, I found it fascinating, though that a team with one of their worst offensive lines in history has two <laughs> offensive linemen go uh, in right. the first three rounds. Does that say anything about the coaching, or does that say anything about the, the, the youth inside on the and interior And to line? piggyback, I find it interesting that the team that goes 13-1 and one and wins the Rose Bowl has one player drafted. And the other one had three. And the other one had three. Yeah. No pressure, Brady Hoke, but yeah, coaching has something to do with this, the, the, you know, the disparity between those two teams right now. And it's funny, I was <clears throat> geeking around, driving around, listening to uh, a, a radio show on, on, on satellite this week, and Brady Hoke was the guest. Well, it was the NFL radio network, and he said that uh, Daryl Funk is like the best offensive line coach well, in the country. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> For what team? Michigan? Yeah. Michigan? Yeah. yeah, okay, great. Which Daryl Funk? Yeah. No, it's interesting. And, and Taylor Lewan, the potential's there. I think it would have been interesting to see if he would have landed in Detroit. Is he a type of guy that can be a Pro Bowl guy? The type of guy that can be a 10, 15 year starter? I think he can be a long term starter. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely. Gotta, he's, I think he'd be a long I don't know that he's going to be a Pro Bowl. I think it would be. Le, I, think, I think it's better for him that he was not drafted by Detroit I agree. just to I get agree. away from Ann Arbor for a little bit. Yeah, that's fair. Although, he and uh, that city do not get along very Although well. his mom was like one of the stars of draft night. She yeah. was pretty, yeah, she yeah, pretty were, good. They were yeah. all riled up those two. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. No, yeah. right. All right, when we come back, we're taking your tweets on TV. <laughs> We're talking Tigers. If you want to weigh in on Michigan, Michigan State, do that. You drive it. You drive the conversation. Use the hashtag 7 Sports Cave. John, Mike, and Brad are at your mercy. We'll be right back. <laughs> this show is as much about you as it is about us. We're uh, hoping you're joining us from your couch, your bed, your front porch, on your tablet, phone, or on TV. The interaction is uh, being driven, on, of course. Did What's you, up? Did you say Happy Mother's Day to your yeah, mom? Yeah. That's coming. There's a tribute. Oh, oh sorry. We I can don't... pull it up in a little bit. I got some pictures I was going to share, but thanks oh. for spoiling the surprise. Really, <laughs> move out this week. Thanks, for, thanks, for, so, thanks for telling me. Yeah, thanks for telling. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, Happy Mother's Day to my yeah. wife and my mother. Happy yes. Mother's Mine's Day. Too. I'll do it third, so I sound terrible. <laughs> Great, thanks, mom. I shine my shoes. She always yells at me and tells my shoes. Good. By the way, did you win the? I think you won the Sox battle between you and me this week. Do I ever not win the Sox battle? Yes. 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 Mike Foss is in the control room. <laughs> Mike, what are people shouting on Twitter other than Happy Mother's Day message? Well, yeah, and I'll throw out one on my own. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. And uh, I'd also like to go back to uh, the, the, the whole thing with Jabba's beard. I tell you what, if you give me about two weeks, I can grow a beard. I'll, I'll have Jabba's beard on my face in about two weeks. Make if, it happen. If I grow it out. No excuses. I think we need to make that happen. happen. on himself, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> Except you'll be red. It'll be like the old uh, Chris Draper playoff beard. There That's we what go. Lumberjack. Don't care. Has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to what people are saying on Twitter. Uh, we got a few more Lions reactions first before we go into the Tigers. Uh, Silver Pig says the Lions draft was a disaster. <laughs> Every pick was a reach. Should have traded down in the first to get the additional pick to draft Denard. That guy says that the Lions agree to pay off my student loans. I'll I'll play cornerback for them for the next three years. I will too. And a sure. couple more with the Tigers. Has Jabba contacted <laughs> Zetterberg for grooming tips? <laughs> tips that comes from Tim B. And finally, a question from Joseph. Do you guys still think they need to possibly upgrade the shortstop position soon? And also, how you feel about the Hanrahan signing, guys? Uh, yeah. I think they're cool in the shortstop for the time being. I mean, Romine's pretty good defensively. Right. I think uh, you can have one guy in your lineup like that. Well, yes, but I think come June, I think Steven Drew or if you're going for it. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And the Hanrahan signing, yeah. I love. I mean, what's the worst yeah. that happen? He's not good. He doesn't make the team. Right. No, exactly. And the Corey Knievel is on his way now. Right. He's a triple A. He just got yep. moved up to triple A. I think he's waiting in the wings. Yeah, I, yeah. go for it with the shortstop. I mean, because Ro Roman has been good defensively, right. but you're not. He can't hit. Yeah. Who has a better beard? Zetterberg or Chamberlain? Well, the Zetterberg's was pretty damn impressive. Yes. That thing yeah. was huge. Yeah. He came back. We hadn't yeah. seen him for weeks since yeah. the surgery. Yeah. And he comes out and he looked like the guy from the Brawny. He, <laughs> weighed, he <laughs> weighed five pounds heavier. I think he <laughs> did. And then he came out on the ice and looked like that. Uh, do we have uh, the ability to pull up the tweets? Because now that they called me out for the Mother's Day, I'd like to propose my little tribute here to my mom. There she is. Aww. Superstar. The, uh, there we are Aww. together. Mom, love you so much. And Tina Fey lookalike. How about that? <laughs> right. Pretty good, huh? Yes. True. No, Mother's Day, fantastic event, and she's a good sports fan. All right. Yeah. yeah well, she, happy her, Mother's Day. Her and Larry did a good job with you. Oh, that's nice. They did. That's <laughs> nice. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to... We're going to come back with our final thoughts in a little bit. I Something love embarrassing we do you. I know. So I, sometimes fun. I lose it. Let me sneak well, in here with you Yeah, too. there we go. Oh, yeah, let me feel yeah. at home. Oh. It's uh, better than what Regner did the other week. God, he just went to town on yeah. me. Oh, yeah, he kept not. teasing me. He said I was hanging out with Mitch McGarry. <laughs> I'm not insinuating that you smoke marijuana. I said, I think by saying that, that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. You've been I'm, hanging out with Josh Gordon, have you? No, no? man. No? Okay. None of that. Yeah. None of that. We're talking about my mom. She's watching. She can't even hear this thing. Oh. Oh, come on, she knows you went to college. I went to college. I didn't do any of that stuff. Hey, let's get back into... And you, and you didn't go to college. <laughs> hey, I didn't go to your college. That's, that's for sure. Let's dive into high school. Okay. Let's keep things a little bit more immature. <laughs> Our friends at State Champ Sports Network give us a play of the week every week. Farmington Hills Mercy softball junior Alex Sobchak. Last year she tied a state record with 17 home runs in a season. She's picking up where she left off. First inning against Ladywood this week. Gone. She hit two in the game. An inning later, she hit her second. Through 10 games this year, she's already got six home runs. 
She committed to Michigan as a freshman. Wow. They won 11 to 1. Congrats. The play of the week here on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. When we come back, our final thoughts. Did she play shortstop for the Tigers? She maybe she <laughs> Well, we hit on about every topic in the Detroit Sparts area going on this week, including the Lions and their draft. But now this is the time after interacting with you on Twitter, interacting with each other, where we just get a minute ourselves to talk about what's chewing, what we've been chewing on, I guess, that's been really eating at us this week. So, Stoney, you're up first. All right. I have to admit something, everyone. I have a new man crush. <laughs> it used to be Charles Barkley and Bruce Springsteen, but not anymore. My new bromance is with Kevin Durant of the Oklahoma City Thunder. I always liked Durant. Great player, never gets in trouble, interacts with fans. Uh, remember when he tweeted out, I want to play some flag football, and he showed up at a college fraternity? It was great. This week, Durant deservedly won the MVP award, but his acceptance speech was almost as good as his game. He thanked everyone who helped him on his struggle, from his high school coaches to his teammates and the pros, but he saved the best for last. His emotional story of how his mom went to bed hungry so he and his brothers could eat and sacrificed her life for him. That brought tears to grown men everywhere. Kevin Durant knows what is important in life and conducts himself in that way. I wish all of us, including myself, did the same. Absolutely brought me to tears. A fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, that was a perfect Mother's Day gift yes. for, uh, from KD there. Well, unlike Stoney here, who grew up watching George Mikan before they had color TVs. I was raised on the golden age of the NBA. Bird and Magic, Dr. J and the Boston Strangler. Stoney, you remember those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bad Boys and Air Jordan. The, the NBA was fantastic as the ad campaign went. But then right about the time I became a wor working stiff, Michael Jordan decided he was going to try to hit a curveball. And not long after that, we all decided we'd never see anything like it again in professional basketball. But you know what? We're seeing it again. Watching this year's NBA playoffs night after night, KD and King James, Chris Paul and Paul George, it's easy to remember how great this league can be when its stars are on display. With three game sevens in one day, with close finishes and clutch shots every night, except for last night, I understand. <laughs> and here's the best part. It isn't what we've got another month. It isn't that we've got another month to go in these playoffs. The Pacers and the Heat are headed for a, a showdown. The Spurs and Lob City. It's that we've got years left to enjoy the show, and that, I couldn't be happier about it. It has been fun to watch this far. And you know what? And the hockey playoffs have been pretty good. No, they have been too. three, three game sevens there, too. Yeah, it has been. Well, when the Rams selected Michael Sam in the seventh round last night, he became the first openly gay football player drafted by an NFL team. When Sam revealed he was gay months ago, the news was met with support around the game, aside from a few cowardly general managers who wished to remain unnamed. Sam knows he'll face a lot of hate, and yesterday it didn't take long for someone within the league to be the first to, sh to throw that first stone. At the moment Sam celebrated and kissed his boyfriend on TV, Dolphins linebacker Don Jones sent two tweets, OMG and horrible. They were quickly taken down, then blasted by G Dolphins GM Dennis Hickey. To me, it shows why Michael Sam is so important. In a moment when a 24-year-old realized his dream, another player two years removed from the league, making the league himself, bashed him as a person. Jones wasn't alone, and he won't be the last to send out the hate. But Sam said he's ready for everything that's ahead of him. Here's to him taking the next step, making the roster, and realizing another dream to show that it doesn't matter who you kiss or hug when you make it to the NFL. It was a powerful moment, no, something that will it, be it watched and, for and, years. And the only problem I have with it, I thought ESP, it was a little overkill. They kept showing it and showing it and showing it. And I think we got the message once. I think the point, and we discussed it at the bar, that not everybody is sitting there watching the draft the I whole know, time. So you're trying to and it was watch it. And it was history. I mean, there, oh. you know, you, know, you, you his, can call it overkill. But his, it, his emotion was, and that was, was real. And real, that was raw cool. emotion. And, I, and I, credit to Jeff Fisher and, and the Rams. They didn't have to take him. They didn't. No. He's not a player that's going to make or break their team. No, but you, but you know what? He saw him there, and he said, you know what? He said he'd been thinking about it for days. He said, let's go get Michael Sam. Let's make a statement. Let's, and I think it helps. He's close to home, right. close to his college fan yep. base. They know him there. He knows them there, the media, et cetera. I think it's really going to help but the transition, too. There's no doubt the teams didn't take him because he was gay. Oh, I'm there's sure there were no plenty. Doubt. I'm sure there were plenty that didn't because he doesn't fit what, you know. Right. What they're, they're, both. Yeah. Both ways. Yeah, I agree. There's and some so, archaic people within the NFL that probably saw that people, and were frightened. And there's and some said, owners. Well, we will never be able to handle that. Said that. You know, he's a distraction. And that's, you know, I wrote about that when, it, when he first came right, out. Right, you did. That, you know, yeah, he's a distraction. Well, you know what? The, there's a lot of 
distracts in the NFL. This guy doesn't have to be one of them. Correct. And hopefully he won't be. It was a real moment shared between two people, and he accomplished a dream, and that was my point. I mean, if watching that moment, if you're not excited for him as a human being, yeah. you got to figure some stuff and out. And a lot of his teammates, his new teammates, you know, right. were immediate on social media, et cetera, op you know, welcome him with open arms. And I thought that was good, too. He might not be able to make that team. That defensive line is so freaking yeah, good. Yeah, I bet they'll find That's a the way you yeah. build a football yeah. team. And the, they'll yeah. find a way. You're I right. think they'll find a way, and I think he will. I think he's a good enough player in a situational role that he will, he will make the team on his own merits. Always good hanging out with you guys. You too. You Thanks too. Thanks for joining yeah. us this week. Thanks to Jabber Chamberlain for joining us, and enjoy those Reese's Jabba. Uh, and of course to Eric Ebron joining David Solano. Thanks for your contribution, Mike Foss in the control room. Look forward to that beard coming up here, Mike. That'll yeah, be impressive. No the big red beard. <laughs> Get him in a beard in the Zubaz and we're, we're set. <laughs> the comparisons will be endless. Thank, thanks to you for tuning in and for joining us uh, and using the hashtag 7 Sportscape. Throughout the week, you can find us all on WXYZ.com. John writes for the Detroit News. Stoney's in the morning on 97.1, Monday through Friday. And we'll be right back here every Sunday on the Suburban Ford 7 Sportscape. Happy thanks Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day.